but yeah, man, we, we just got to be on top of it. We got to be on top of it and stop letting these people intimidate us. And then we got to let them know what the deal is and stop letting them run these Jedi mind tricks. Stop letting these people try to talk down at us. You got to check them because these folks sit up here and try to criticize us for stuff that they turn their little degenerates into heroes for. And I was going back and forth with one of these white supremacists earlier. Listen, listen, black people, let me tell you something. And another thing, stop letting them play the whole black on black crime and the blacks are criminals and 14% of the population and 50% of the crime. Man, stop letting them run that game. The white supremacists are the biggest criminals on damn earth and they're, they don't have no hero class. I want y'all to really get that in your head. See, with black folks, yeah, we got knuckleheads, but we cover the whole spectrum because we are such a diverse group, but a foundation of black Americans. We're very diverse. So we have some of the best and the brightest. We have some knuckleheads out here, but at least our best and brightest, we can balance out the knuckleheads because we have iconic heroes that are internationally recognized and respected. White supremacist society does not, does not, does not have any heroes. Who are they? Are there any suspected white supremacists in here? Who are your heroes? Their heroes are Kyle Rittenhouse, Daniel Penny, George Zimmerman. All of their heroes are damn degenerates. There's no balance to their degeneracy. All of their heroes are degenerates. We have morally superior heroes and icons. We have the Dr. Kings, the Malcolm X's, the Harriet Tubman's, the Sojourner Truths, the Frederick Douglass's, the Ida B. Wells, the Rosa Parks. Oh, my God. The list goes on. Um, Betty Shabazz. So many phenomenal icons. Dr. Cobber, Professor James Small, living legends. Dr. Claude Anderson, a living legend icon hero. Betty Mason. We... Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, um, Dr. Neely Fuller, we have icons, Asa Hillard, um, Dr. Tony Browder. Oh my God, the list goes on. We have iconic heroes in Black society, Dr. John Henry Clark. We can balance it out. The white supremacists don't have no heroes. The heroes are degenerates, right? Who, who are their heroes? And I was having a debate with a white supremacist and he started naming some people. I said, who are your heroes? He said, Benjamin Franklin, Nikola Tesla, <laughs> and a man named um, Henry Miller. Now, Henry Miller, he's a little known guy. He's not really, this guy who he had his books banned because he was writing about his damn sex fantasies. That's your hero? Benjamin Franklin? A degenerate slave owner, that's your, he's a slave owner. That's your hero, a degenerate. If you were a slave owner, you're a damn degenerate. That's your hero, Nikola Tesla, who did some, some interesting things with science. Nikola Tesla was a freak. You know, Nikola Tesla was very moist, and this dude had a romantic relationship with a bird, a pigeon. Google what I just told you. I'm cutting his ass down with facts. Y'all didn't know that? Nikola Tesla <laughs> had a romantic relationship with a pigeon. Google that. I'm not exaggerating. Just Google what I just told you. Then he said another hero in their community is Elon Musk. Lord. Okay. There's a class action suit where 6,000 black people are suing Elon Musk's company right now. <laughs> okay. All right. That's your, that's your hero? Okay. You just proved my point. Okay. Th this is what I'm saying. You, you, their heroes are degenerates, man. So don't let these people run no game on us. Boy, we got a spirit that, that's unmatched. Well, we have that spirit of Mojara. Look at the hashtag up there. That's that spirit we have. We have the spirit of Mojara. That's unmatched, man. Let's get Dustin in here. Dustin, hop on. Dustin Tucker. Dustin Tucker, hop on in here. Yeah. Dustin? Where you at, Mr. Dustin Tucker? Yo, what's up? I'm good, man. How are you? 
Turn your microphone back on, Mr. Dustin. Oh, my, my mic's good. What's up? Okay, so what's on your mind, Mr. Dustin? I'm saying, like, you know, you want to sit here and you say that uh, you are this, that, and the other. Like, it sounds like you are above me. Now, why would you say that? I didn't say that. I mean, I'm just saying it, it sounds like what you're sitting here perpetuating to all these people that you're above me. Like, you're, you know, uh, defense, you know, for whatever is above me. Okay, well, let me ask you this, sir. Here's an, an honest question. Who are the heroes in your community? Who are the internationally respected heroes from your community? I mean, heroes in my community as far as, like, why do I need heroes in my community? Like, why would I need something like that? Everybody needs heroes to look up to and to attain to be. Right? No, I don't need heroes in my community. I don't need somebody in my yeah. community to, to, you know, accentuate what I am. That's not what it's for. All communities have some form of hero to that community. You don't have a hero? You don't. Your community doesn't have heroes, sir? No, I don't uh, associate myself with anybody of my community that is, you know, Sending your, you know, you know, coming to my defense. Like I need to come to my own defense. Like I don't understand where, that. you know, whether it be white or black. Like, uh, why do I need somebody to come to my defense? Who said anything about? I'm talking about a basic hero, somebody past, present, future within your society who you can look up to and say, "Hey, I would like to be like that person. I, I, I admire what that person has done." Who there has to be? Because look, look for in our community is Martin Luther King. That's one example. In our community, Foundation of Black American Community, Rosa Parks. So who's the Rosa Parks in your community? Right, but what if there isn't that person in my community? Like, I, I, well, don't, my I don't necessarily that's my, feel well, that's like my point. I'm black. That's my point. I don't necessarily feel point. like I'm white. Like, I, I feel like, like I'm in between the two, like, because I'm Native American, really. So I mean, like, who should I, you know, have that connection with? Oh God, what what tribe are you supposed to be from, sir? No, I, I'm not even saying from any tribe. Like, honestly, I, I identify primarily as white. Like, who am I supposed right. to have that sort of you know connection with? Oh God. Okay. Thank. I, I I just don't want to hear this horse shit. I I, I I'm I just I'm not gonna waste your time. I I just don't want to hear it. He can't even get his damn lie straight. Oh, God. Damn. I, you know, I just don't want to hear it. He's already, I don't want to, he's going to sit here lying. He's Native American. But yeah, I'm really white because, yeah, I'm about, to, I'm about to unwrap that Native American lie. Here they go. Because I'm about to really unpack that. He knew where that was going. I'm about to unpack that bullshit. So he had to change it. Well, yeah, I really identify as white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet you do. Yeah. Yeah, don't let them run that Native American thing. Which is funny to me. What's what's interesting, when black people claim some of our indigenous heritage, boy, they act like, it. oh, what, what are you talking about? But they let these um, Kenny Rogers-looking white people sit up here and claim to be some damn Native American, a bunch of $5 Indians with no drop of Native American ancestry in you whatsoever. You dig? Most black people who's been here for a long time, Foundation of Black Americans, have some type of black indigenous ancestry because some of the indigenous people here on this land were black people. And I really want y'all to start reiterating that, too, because that's very important because this is our land. We got to claim our damn land. This is our land, too. We mixed in with the brothers and sisters who were brought over from Africa and some of the ones who came over from Africa before Columbus. We mixed in with all of that and we became an ethnogenesis group called Foundational Black Americans. We became a whole new group. Who's giving the thumbs down? Mr. Ike Burner? Well, well, somebody was giving the thumbs down. I was going to get Ike Burner in here. All right. Let's get some of these other people in here. Let's get um, Briano. Let's get Briano in here. Let's get Briano in the building. Hi, right, Briano. Uh, can you hear me? 
Yes, sir. I can hear. I you. appreciate you. It's my first time listening to one of your spaces, so thank you. Okay, my man. I appreciate. No you. worries. Uh, just based on just a few things that I've heard, you know, from the beginning, from the Kyle Rittenhouse situation, um, to your position on like the white supremacists, and I appreciate what you said about Elon Musk and all that stuff. I'm kind of, I'm still kind of trying to see where you land because based on all of that, it seems like mostly the Republican party are more aligned with the things that you're against based on the conversation i've heard so far so i guess my question is why would you or why does it seem like you're you would want to want the democratic party to lose it seems like it's a spite situation because of maybe you feel like they haven't done enough to move your position forward over the years but wouldn't that be kind of counterproductive why would I support the Democrats? No, 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 not support the Democrats, because earlier uh, I think someone called in and you said we have to make sure that the Democratic Party loses. And um, I think one, yes. one lady called in and said she's going to stay home. Why wouldn't you encourage, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it, it doesn't get you all the way you want, but at least it gets you further away from something that you're completely against, which is the white supremacy, the Elon Musk of the world and the, the Republican Party in general. Oh, brother, the the deadliest white supremacists are the Democrats, sir. You think the Democrats ain't run by white supremacists? I, I won't. I won't deny that in, um, entirely, but overtly, you can see it. I mean, just go through Elon Musk's feed, right? You can see, mm -hmm. you know, plain, plain as day, um, great replacement theory he's pushing. He just met with Trump, so it seems like the Republican side are overtly pushing remember they overwhelmingly supported Kai Rittenhouse that's one of the reasons why he got off which I think he should have went to jail you know what I mean and let me oh see that's the trick the Democrats supported Kyle too the white liberal media which is Democratic liberal run they sat there protecting Kyle too that area out there and those look a lot of these areas where black people are harmed and all of this weird stuff happens a lot of this happens in Democratic-run cities. When Mike Brown got killed, that was a Democratic-run city. When Eric Garner got killed, Democratic-run city. Um, just um, up there in Minnesota, um, when uh, Philando Castile got killed, Democratic-run city. And they don't do anything. They sat here and let black folks get slaughtered and sat up here pointing the finger when Trump got in office talking about, oh, look at Trump's America. No, we were getting slaughtered under the Democrats. Obama, well, we were getting shot down in the streets almost every other day. Their administration didn't punish anybody. Zimmerman, nobody. So the problem is we've been supporting the Democrats. See, we haven't been supporting the Republicans. We've been supporting the Democrats overwhelmingly in high numbers, and they sat out here and let us um, um, wither on the vine. So this is why we're letting them know, hey, it's time for y'all to pay up. And they're turning around, tooting their asses up to us, and we're going to turn around and toot our ass back up to them. That's where we are with it right now. All right. Fair. I, pre I appreciate that. I appreciate there that. There you go. Thank you so much. Get some more people on here. Man, no, we're not going to do, though. The Republicans are the open racist. See, the, the Democrats love to do that. Whenever they talk about racism, they like to point the finger at Trump and the Republicans. So I'm not going to let them play that game because y'all do, y'all doing the same shit. Y'all opening up the floodgates and letting these people come right into these black neighborhoods to stomp down on us. You dig? At least Trump them ain't doing that. Man, Jacob Frank. Let's get Jacob Frank in here. Jacob Frank. All right, Mr. Jacob Frank. We got over a thousand people in here. Uh, all right. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. How are you, Jacob? Um, I'm all right. All right so what's on your mind? Uh, I guess what you guys are talking about. I was going to ask you. So you think like the 15 year old girl that like, getting her head smashed in, going into a coma? is going to be the pinnacle of uh, the black self-defense? Is that the uh, is that the fight you're willing to make? Well, number one, she isn't in a coma, and we're um, looking at it the same way y'all did with Rittenhouse. That was your pinnacle, and you guys set a precedent, so that precedent should apply to the black girl, right? Oh, shit, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Kyle Rittenhouse, yeah, that's, that's 
uh, completely analogous. How so? It's actually disanalogous. So I was being sarcastic. But uh, because, know, because there was three days of riots, uh, there was months and months of riots of wh whatever you guys wanted to fight about. George Floyd. Do you know there was anti-fascist firebombing uh, Greek, the United States Greek embassy in Greece, um, like two days after George Floyd happened? You're right. Yeah. So so obviously, I know you're on the same page. And I, I was going to ask you this, but I think you're on the same page. You don't like Democrats, too. I was going to ask you, where did the Black Lives Matter riots go? Where did the Black Lives Matter movement go? Did uh, the senile pedophile in chief quelm your guys' uh, angst? I don't know what you're asking. You're trying to be sarcastic and witty and it's falling flat. Just ask me some straight up and down questions because these are just, you're just making little statements. Okay, well, questions. I don't have any questions. I mean, it's... right. Okay, you're trying to be witty and it's not working, sir. Let's let's get to the nitty gritty. So um, with the George Floyd thing, you, do you agree with Chavin going to prison for murdering George Floyd? No. Okay. So you think that he should have sat there and lynched that man? I mean, I, I think he could have kneeled on my neck. I wouldn't have died. I think George Floyd had like four times the amount of fentanyl in his system. He was saying, well, luckily, well, well luckily, well, luckily that I'm white and I say so stuff didn't work. And Chavin is in jail getting that ass poked with a shank. So that I'm white and I say so didn't work this time, sir. So we're not doing the I'm white and I say so no more. That's not going to work because y'all that's called white supremacy. You want to practice this weird lynch mob white supremacy stuff. And with this, this isn't the 1950s anymore. There's repercussions for that stuff. You understand? Um, I, yeah, I definitely understand. But I, there you I go. Don't. All right. And, and Chavin, Chavin is getting some fentanyl poked out of his ass in prison. You shouldn't kill people. You, you don't want to get poked in prison. Don't kill nobody. You don't want people turning up and bombing embassies and all of that. Don't do no degenerate murder on video like that and make the country look bad. That was a bad look for this nation. We got to it's always black people, foundation of black Americans having to smack the people around to produce some damn justice and some moral dignity because the white supremacists want to bring their filthy um, degenerate mindset and put it on display for the world to see. We always have to be the moral real to reel everybody back in to make it seem like this society has some damn sense. You don't sit around here killing people when you are sanctioned by the state to protect the community. So that degenerate white supremacist mindset, that is a cancer. And foundational black Americans are here to produce justice to eradicate that cancerous mentality so that we can live a harmonious society like we got some goddamn sense. You understand? And if, if there's a situation where a white girl who can't fight runs up on a, a, an innocent sister and the sister has to um, knock some sense into her, unfortunately, if you guys set a precedent for self-defense, that self-defense should go to that 15-year-old so, girl. So you would be outraged if Kyle Rittenhouse didn't happen? You'd be outraged right now? No, what are you talking about? You're bringing up Kyle Rittenhouse for... Yeah, and, 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 and many others. And many others. Cal Rittenhouse is just the most um, blatant one that a lot of people in your community, they love running around talking about self-defense, self-defense, self-defense. So can I actually ask you some anthropological questions? Oh, oh here we go. Yeah, yeah. What, what's well, that? Because you're saying your community and like, uh, well, first question, do you think like maybe if you uh, label someone a white supremacist and they're not one, do you think that trivializes uh, white supremacy? No, because if I say somebody's a suspected white supremacist and they do something that a white supremacist does, that puts me on alert. Now, Cal Rittenhouse is a suspected white supremacist. Right? I mean, I think he's just like some, is he autistic or something? I think he's just some kid who knew how to shoot. Y'all don't stop every time. Every, all, it's all like, what did I say the other day, guys? Whenever these suspected white supremacists go out here and become degenerate murderers, either it's some weird self-defense or they have some mental disability. Uh, there was a black autistic kid out here in San Bernardino who just got sh gunned down by the San Bernardino police. I don't want to hear that bullshit. They kill autistic black children all the time. They don't coddle them like a cow written house. OK, so we're not going to well, play that game. But let me get some. Let me okay. Let me get some more calls. Thank you, Jacob. I, I don't want to hear this horse shit. Okay, I don't want to hear it. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm just not in the mood to hear white supremacists babble. 
oh lord now cow has a disability i don't want to i don't even want to entertain that here they go when they go shoot up every damn thing oh lord no well his mama took a pill when she was pregnant Oh, Jeffrey Dahmer, yeah, I know he was eating people, but when his mother was about to give birth, there was some Pfizer medicine she took and it made Jeffrey crazy. Well, how come everybody else ain't eating fucking people then? If Jeffrey Mama took this pill and it made him a degenerate ass sexual cannibal freak, how come everybody else ain't one? They got a damn million excuses for everything. Nobody wants to hear it. And we're not doing the I'm white and I say so. Black folks, just shut it down. Black people, we ain't, we ain't trying to hear I'm white and I say so. Well, I'm not trying to hear that George Floyd has some fentanyl. Like we didn't see that man get lynched on video. You're not going to play I'm white and I say so here. You're not going to tell me I didn't see what I didn't see. Stop it. That's I'm white and I say so is white supremacy. And black folks, don't be silly to go along with that nonsense. Look, test boy, you keep putting it up on test boy. Mr. Test Boy, hop on. Mr. Test Boy, hop on, sir. Can you hear me? All right. Yes, sir. How are you? Hey, what's going on, Tariq? I'm good, Test Boy. Where are you from? From Chicago. There you go. You, you, you're a black gentleman, Eritrean, Hispanic, white. Where are you from? I'm Hispanic. There you go. From Mexico or Puerto Rico? Uh, Mexico. Okay. How long have you been up there in Chicago? Uh, for 20 plus years. Okay. Well, you sound pretty young. How do you? I don't want to dox myself. And ain't nobody trying to dox you, so, but you sound like you're just kind of making stuff up as you go along. Yeah. Right? I'm I'm actually actually nice great, but let me way. interrupt you for a second. Hey, Tyreek, I have a question. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, let me go first. Hold on. Let me, hold on. Let me, Mel, hold on. I'll get you back in a minute, Mel. Hold on. Yeah, I'm actually, we spoke want... before. I'm from Greece and Italy. We were speaking about something else. You are, oh, you're from, you're really from Greece and Italy. Okay, so why'd you lie? Come on, dude. I don't know. I was just trolling, but I was just, I was. That, that's what yeah, I'm. Yeah, but earlier, I can tell you, um, go ahead. you were saying you wanted uh, somebody to list the white heroes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering if you're going to, you will allow me to uh, list some people. Okay, go ahead. All right. Who's not degenerate? List some people, some white internationally known heroes. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Right, who, you who's, ready? Who's not degenerate? But go ahead. All right. Aristotle, Alexander the Great, Henry Ford, Shakespeare, Isaac Newton, Leonardo da Vinci, Nikola Tesla, Plato, Socrates, Julius Caesar, Napoleon, Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, Thomas Edison, George Washington, Charles Darwin, Galileo, Machiavelli, Benjamin Franklin, Christopher Columbus. Constantine the Great, Caesar Augustus, Mozart, Copernicus, the Wright Brothers, Walt Disney, Beethoven, <laughs> uh, Marco Polo, okay. Peter the Great, Voltaire, Homer, uh, and Alexander Graham Bell. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Yo, I'd I be here all night debunking this shit. Okay. So I, I'm I, just would, I would be if here you all could night. compete with a list like that. I'm just wondering. Okay, Lord, Lord, where do I start? Where do I start? Yeah, Alexander Graham I, Bell. I know you guys who, created okay. peanut butter, but like, um, I'm trying to hear something like influential in the world. Okay, well, you mentioned Henry Ford, the person behind who, who the peanut butter person who was behind Henry Ford was George Washington Carver, who was doing all of the scientific work behind the scenes for Henry Ford. So, it, it's, it's I can it's, and you said Alexander the Great, really somebody who was out here uh, raping dudes and stealing bussy. Okay, okay, all right, thank, thank you, thank you. So really, okay. that's that's it's, what you're gonna treat you get really, it's, it's, it's too easy to okay, okay. Do y'all want me to waste? I can debunk damn near every name he named. Lord. Aristotle and the, the people who learn from black folks. Okay. All right. Those are your heroes. Those are people who went over to Egypt and learned from the black folks in Africa. Okay. Um, Lord. Da Vinci, who was up here, bussy snatching. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Some of these people you named were degenerates. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. 
man, Columbus, Christopher, the people. Okay. Christopher Columbus, who came over and genocided a bunch of people. That's your hero. The, you, you're proving my point, dude. Damn. Okay, you just proved my point, man. Lord. <laughs> you just sat here and proved my damn point. Napoleon, who tried to genocide people too. Okay, you proved my point, brother. Who tried to genocide the Haitians and they fought back on his ass. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you kind of proved my point, man. All your heroes are degenerates. All right? Your heroes are a bunch of murderous, genocidal damn degenerates. Those are your heroes. That is my point. Or thieves who stole game. Now, Alexander Graham Bell was getting the game from Lewis Latimer, from black people, degenerate thieves. Oh, I don't really want to play this game. You notice these people are proving my point. And look, you even had you had to dig back real deep to find some heroes. You had to dig real deep. And a lot of these people weren't even considered white. You said Beethoven. Beethoven was basically a mulatto. They called Beethoven a Moor. You know? You better learn some history. That's what I said. I'll be here. That shit, I'll be here all day debunking that. I can spend an hour on each of them names slowly debunking all of that shit. Dude, that's too easy. That's too easy. I'll let y'all handle that. Uh, y'all handle that in the chat. When y'all catch him and de please debunk, it's too easy for me. I, I don't want to wait. That's too easy. Even the, the, the dude had to dig way back. You had to dig back centuries and still pulled up some damn degenerates. Alexander the Great, bussy snatching ass Alexander the Great. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Who's out here tan bussy up out here in them damn Middle Eastern streets? <laughs> All right. That's your hero. That's your hero. All right. That's my point. Your heroes are degenerates. <laughs> so he's not lying. Those are your heroes. All right. Our heroes aren't bussy snatchers and murderers. Notice our heroes are honorable people. They don't have to shoot people and commit genocide. That's the great thing about foundational Black American culture. We have a bunch of non-genocidal heroes who we can turn to and say, hey, look at these people. These are upright people. You dig? Let me get some more calls in here. Oh, goodness. Okay, Lord. Empress, let's get Empress Lyric in here. Empress Lyric. All right. Hop on, Miss Empress. Good evening. Hi, Miss Empress. How are you? I'm well. Thank you for having me up. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate you. What's on your mind, dear? Um, I had a quick question for you regarding your um, yes. perspective on the process of... Um, the thought of people thinking that the parties of the Republican and the Democrat are actually of the same bird, different, you know, same bird, different wings, or you know what I'm saying? How do you feel about yeah. that? Uh, oh, you don't? Let me explain. Um, no, 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 I do. Oh, you do. I think oh, it's okay. the same. They, they... <laughs> so how do you, um, how do you, I guess, so sort of feel about that uh, perspective? Well, here's the thing. My thing is, when we're dealing with two evil entities, my thing is, okay, which one of these assholes going to give me something? That's all I want to know. Because I'm not here to be like. See, we don't have to like nobody. These are business deals. We got to look at this as business deals. When people do business, especially in the dominant white society, they don't like each other. It's all about what they can get out of the business deal. Let me tell you something. Living out here in Hollywood and working with Hollywood, I would go to different meetings with some producers and we'll talk about developing a show or whatever. And then about a month later, one of the producers I'm talking to is at a whole different company. They didn't start their own company and they're rivaling the company that they were just with, that I just had a meeting with them. They would do that all the time. They'd be friends and then they'll become rivals the very next month. And then they're trying, they're trying to bring me over. And so they look at things. It's all business, not personal. In the 1960s, um, 
the person who actually got the civil rights bill signed was racist ass Lyndon B. Johnson. Now, Lyndon B. Johnson, right after Kennedy got assassinated, um, Kennedy was, you know, running around here kissing black babies and all of this stuff, acting like a friend to black society. And um, Malcolm X was calling him out. And after he died, um, later on in the 60s, black people started turning up and Lyndon B. Johnson was the one who actually signed the Civil Rights Bill, was forced to do it because of the grassroots turning up. And Lyndon B. Johnson, boy, he's on tape. There's, there's secret tapes of him using the N-word, calling Dr. King a nigga. He sounds like a typical redneck, all right? But he got some shit done that we needed done. You dig? That's all it is for us. It's business. So with Republicans or the Democrats, I'm not here to be liked. I don't want to be up in the, y'all don't want to sit here in a church singing with nobody. I'm not trying to hug on folks, skinning and grinning and eating catfish nuggets. What are we going to get as foundational black Americans? What type of tangibles? If Trump has tangibles, let me holler at Trump. The Democrats have tangibles, we'll holler at them. If a, an independent have tangibles, we'll holler at them. It's business. That's all we have to do. So whoever has some good business deals, that's who I want to roll with. Now let's get Mel. Mel Gibson. Um, person, hop on. Now your name is Martin something, so you change your thing. Okay, Martin. Wait, no, no, no. I tried to get Hello? Mel Gibson up. Hold on. Okay, well, what's up, Martin? Hi. Uh, so I have a question for you. Go ahead. So um, when you talk about um, whites... And you talk about um, blacks. Why do you separate blacks, um, black Americans from black immigrants, but you don't separate whites from Jews? Because that's a religion, and Jew is not a location. You know what I'm saying? There are a lot of people who are <laughs> uh, who a lot of Jewish people who identify as atheists but they still consider themselves ethnically Jewish. I, I don't know what their ideologies are, but a lot of them are still white. See, I don't really break white people up like that because the white supremacists, here's the thing, whatever religious background they have, they all operate as a unit when it comes to us. That's why it's different. With black immigrants, they don't operate as a unit when it comes to us. Too many of y'all will come over here and get with the white supremacists against us. Y'all get off code. That's the problem. Whites and um, Anglo whites and Jewish whites, when it comes to black people, they find a common ground and they all get on code. They put all of those little differences aside. That's why I don't let them break shit up um, when they try to talk about racism. Well, they no, it was really the Jews. No, 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 it was really the Anglos. They play that game. We were enslaved by Anglo white supremacists, atheist white supremacists, Jewish white supremacists. All of them were on code selling us to each other, to, to each of them, rather. So, so, so yeah, are I don't all up. black people are victims of white supremacy, too? Just like how all yes, they whites are. are white supremacists. So shouldn't you, like, differentiate, like, between, like, Jews who run, who control the hip hop industry, for example, versus uh, the white Christians who tend not to do that. Now, should I separate the Jews who control the hip hop industry? What do you mean? Uh, Jews control hip hop, like they just put a black face in front of it. But uh, no, they don't. No, they don't. They control the record industry. They don't control hip hop. Hip hop is not just the record industry. They don't control hip hop. Yes, they do. If I want to have a hip hop concert tomorrow, I can have one and I don't have to have a Jewish person or white person do anything to stop me or help me or intervene with me doing that. So what are you talking about? Well, they do control like the entertainment industry. And the, 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 the record industry. They control the, the record the industry. The entertainment industry. And I think that's why like a lot of like blacks in that world don't criticize them or can't say anything about them. So it would be better if like 
people like you can separate like uh, Anglo whites and Jewish whites. Why? Because what's the difference between an Anglo white supremacist and a Jewish white supremacist? They're different. Like uh, how so? So Jews like they uh, there's there's a sector of their society that pushes all of this degeneracy and they put an FBA face on it. And Anglo society does that too. And there's a lot of Jewish people in Hollywood who do it too. Uh-huh. And Anglos too. So yeah, what's the difference? There's no difference. You're just proving that there's no difference. Anglos do that too. Which Anglos do it too? Because it's primarily uh, um, Jewish people who control Hollywood. So and the all of the entertainment sectors, all of the white supremacists do it. Name the ones, name the Anglos who don't do it. I mean, all of them do it. Every network, now Jewish people don't own every single network, but all of the networks portray us in a, a disempowering light. So there's no difference. So there's no difference between a Jewish or white supremacist and an Anglo white supremacist. They're just white supremacists, but when it comes to Blacks, right. Right. What's it the comes, difference? You, 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 well, it, you, you guys it. divide it into like Caribbeans, Nigerians, FBAs, but we're all victims of white supremacy. And here's the thing, sir. The way we react to the victimization is different because Foundation of Black Americans, we challenge the victimization. Well, A lot of people kind of go along with it. You guys have been losing. We have been losing. Because you can't show me an FBA society where FBAs control the society, where it's prosperous. You guys build societies like America for your masters, but you guys don't, uh, you guys can't uh, run a society as well as out. Right. What society has your culture ran? We haven't run any society. Blacks all over right. the world have been losing. Right. So white supremacy is global. What part of Africa are you from? Uh, Niger well, uh, I was born here, but my parents are from Nigeria. And and sounds like, and with, with all due respect, you've been buck broken, sir. So you're not going to really fight white supremacy. And what, you fled from that. What, what, family had to what does uh, buck broken mean? Okay. Well... Have you seen my movie Buck Breaking? Uh, uh, no, I have not. Okay. Um, I'm I'm trying to be nice about it. Okay, it's, it's just uh, uh, someone being gay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, okay. We we can say that. Okay. Yeah. So, when did you get turned out? Um, when did you get turned out? You're the one who's so concerned about uh, someone being gay. I think you're projecting. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see why I, the I, Jews I, give you the money, Tariq. I can see why. You do a lot of, uh, I hope you do well. You make, you, you do, I hope you do well. Yeah. Okay, let me. Okay, no, I'm not even trying to be funny, brother. I'm, I'm just saying. It. I'm not. I'm not trying to be funny. Brother. I don't even care about but, being gay or not. I just want you to provide brother, an argument. Brother, 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 I'm gay. Brother, okay, brother. prove me wrong. You gay? You're gay. You're gay. Yes. Man. and that, that's okay. 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 That's now okay. prove me that's wrong. Okay. Where can you okay. point to a society where FBAs run it, where they can okay. six, like where they're prosperous? Okay. Name the place. Okay. Now, we don't run anything because we're still under the thumb of white supremacy. But the thing is, we've carved a niche so that we can be prosperous and other black people can be prosperous. And that's why you fled over here. And we're prosperous and you're allowed to prosper because somebody had to challenge these white supremacists to say, hey, enough is enough. We're not going to sit here and starve now. You're not going to have us do all the work and we're going to pay taxes and we don't benefit from some of the resources. So we, somebody had to fight for that. Everybody couldn't be buck broken and everybody couldn't run. Somebody had to stand up to these degenerates and that was foundational black americans because you weren't doing that in nigeria 
Y'all let these white supremacists come take over your homeland and you're the majority over there. And they still over there whooping down on people now. And y'all got all of those different tribal beasts and nobody's on code. And y'all can get shit popping if you got rid of the tribal FBA's, beasts. And FBA's the, FBA's beef too. What, like what happened to your nephew that got shot? Wasn't he beefing with another FBA too? Um, no, just some goofy Negro who was pussy. Oh, was that a tattoo? Was the tattoo who My shot you? Was the tattoo? Did the tattoo shoot your nephew? Well, somebody shot in your pussy, but that's your, your nephew the point, got sir. shot. We, your nephew we, almost got talking, killed. You should be you know, more concerned about, about the tribe Zaddy, in your community. Zaddy, than Zaddy, Zaddy is shooting is. in your pussy. So Zaddy is shooting in your pussy. So, so you don't, you don't care about your nephew so. then. You don't care about your nephew. He got shot. My nephew. You was fine, but how's your bussy, sir? It sounds sore because of <laughs> it getting shot up in and you running. So <laughs> your nephew, we're talking your, your about nephew or you're, you're talking you're talking about non sequiturs. Stop trying to be witty and let's get to the nitty gritty. All right, sir, you you fled for a reason. We're your talking about the tribe. Your nephew should Well, no, at least my nephew bussy ain't spread open, so he's good. All right, but he we got take shot. He out. almost died. We can. They, they sewed up the bullet wound. They can't sew up your bussy. So Man, there's a big difference. He's almost dead. So while about and your and your, and your pussy, your bussy got killed. So <laughs> all right, he's he's alive, and your bussy and is dead. Your nephew dead. almost died. So did he visit <laughs> him in the hospital? Like, oh, well, sir, why didn't you? Did they did Zaddy visit you in the hospital when they cracked your bussy open and had to get that gerbil out? Did they visit you then? Did your nephew flee the head? Did he at least try to flee the hood so he wouldn't get shot uh, my, by like a tether? My, on FBA? my nephew was. Fine. Um, did you shoot some bush meat and bring that over here when you fled? Did you do that? Um, well, okay, I actually have an interesting story. So there is like, um, in Baltimore, they found that in 50 schools uh, t uh attended by tethers, none of the tethers actually met the standards in math and reading. In Baltimore, sir, you don't want to go there because over in your homeland, y'all still no, no, no. I'm saying no. I'm saying yeah. The tattoo, is... sir, sir. I, I don't know where you're going with this, sir. Um, you're just saying random stuff. But sir, when you flee, um, you're not really at liberty to come over and wag no, your no, finger. no, no. Yeah, exactly. The tattoo failed in their homeland, and they come to like schools in America and like Baltimore, and none of them can meet the standards in math and reading. They okay. failed in Africa, and, and like I read a story that said that in all of the school districts with okay, the majority so African Americans, no, in majority tethers, that they there was not one student who met the standard in math tethers. Okay, so what's your point? Yeah, so like maybe there's something to it. Maybe I don't know why. Like we failed in Africa, and we come here, and it's, a, it's such a gigantic failure because there's districts with tethers all over the country where not a single tether student actually met the standard in math. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's why tethers are bug broken. That's why they don't run around claim that they built a great country because how can you build a great country if in like the Baltimore public schools with a majority of tethers and all of these tether majority school districts, not one student met the standard in math. Okay. But the Baltimore so that's school a failed, system. That's a failed culture. So that's a failed culture. Okay. I mean, I, I don't get what your point is because some of the school districts, they're run, you know, the school districts over here, a lot of them are run by the white supremacists. Now, when we look at black independent schools, some of the black kids are passing with flying colors. So it's really about who's teaching the kids and what's no, no, the no, curriculum. No, 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 FBAs, no. FBAs get like the highest SAT scores out of everyone. FBAs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they get the highest, like all of, everyone wants to move into FBA neighborhoods. Uh, they're go they're applying to Harvard and MIT in large numbers. They both the country, FBA engineers all over the place. So yeah, so that's the difference between a successful culture and the culture that failed.
Well, yeah, when you oh, have lights, right. well, yeah, when you have pe- things like lights, that's foundation of Black Americans. Yep. When you have running toilets, that's a foundation of Black American creation. So, yeah, we we've created a lot of things. American and you guys culture performed the best. American culture is foundation of Black American. Culture. Yeah, so that's why you guys perform so well, like academically too, compared um, to other groups. Yes, indeed. When we're doing it independently, yes, independently. No, no, yes, no. We're forget good about independent. You guys I'm talking about independent anyway. You guys succeed everywhere. You well, guys, you need to. Well, I sorry. would love to move into an FBA neighborhood. What you don't live in? A, you don't live in a white neighborhood. Yeah. Where do you? Where do you live in now? You don't. You. Where, uh, what neighborhood do you live in now? I live. I guess it's white. It's majority white, but there's so too you much must time. live with Zaddy. You must live with a Zaddy. There's too much time. This white communities. I, so I you must live with a. You must have a Zaddy. You must have a Zaddy. I want to move into an FBA neighborhood because um, there's too much. Whites out here. <clears throat> I can't even walk down the street at night because a white supremacist will lynch me, and they're known for being violent criminals. So that's why. No, you probably walk you down guys. the street at night because you're selling bussy to a white man because you sound like you got. It sounds balls like in, what? It sounds like what? Like you sound like you got balls in your jaws now, sir. So you're trying to be sarcastic, but the, the sarcastic. No, you No, so. no. Yeah, maybe. Okay, okay, let me get some more people. But now I'm just getting bored. Okay, let me get some more folks in here because see this. I don't want to hear tie tongue tether just ramble. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see who else we got. But some of these tethers just be rambling. I'm trying to wait for him to get to a point. He just. They'll ramble on and on if you let them. Shit. Sitting there, bussy leaking. Okay. From the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all natural foundational Black American based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror Root. Our unique blend, enriched with this legendary root, offers 24-hour protection, rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. 